The recent PBS series, Coming Back, followed soldiers on their return from the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. New York Times best-selling author and former Army Captain Wes Moore created the series. Let's take a look. A conversation. Okay. KPBS is hosting a conversation between Moore and San Diego veterans tonight at the Midway Museum. Moore joins me now. Wes, welcome to the program. It's great to be here. Thank you. This KPBS series that you hosted was touted as your search for answers to some of the most difficult questions facing soldiers who are returning from these two wars. What are some of those difficult questions? You know, I, I think that there's, there are a lot of challenges that, uh, that we understood and, and uncovered. I mean, and, and a lot of them are structural. Um, but I think some of the biggest questions that come that I really wanted to try to understand is how is it that all people have a transition, but for some people the transition just happens to be more difficult than others? Uh, we can't chalk it up to how difficult the deployment was because there's some people I know who had very difficult deployments and have transitioned well back home, and some people that you know had deployments that were, were you know people would call a bit easier, and have had a very difficult time transitioning back home. Uh, it's not about intelligence. It's not about educational barriers. All these other things. What were those factors that help people either have smooth transitions or for some people have the transition? be too tough to bear and these were really what I wanted to uncover and what did you find you know one thing that I that I found was that you know regardless of of the transition uh, all of us transition from times of conflict and times of, of warfare uh, you know and it's not to say that everyone comes back damaged or everyone comes back as you know kind of you know these uh, you know ticking you know ideas ready to go off but it is about the fact that for each and every person who goes to that deployment, you are going to have reintegration, uh, you know, reintegration platforms, challenges, and opportunities with your family, with your community, with your job, with your institution of higher education, whatever the case is. And that reintegration process has to be understood not just by you and your family, but also the entire community. So that reintegration process involves getting access to certain services and as you know the media is filled with headlines these days about the long waits at the VA and some of the falsification of records that have taken place and I remember during the Iraq war doing stories about how the families of these soldiers were struggling so hard to make ends meet. Do you think that our soldiers get the support that they need? Unfortunately, I think for far too many soldiers, uh, if the support is out there, they have to work far too hard to get it. Um, you know, because I think unfortunately what happens for a lot of soldiers is while we're overseas fighting, you know, we get everything that we ever ask for. We get, you know, every type of resource and equipment and everything like that while you're overseas. Um, but, you know, for far too many veterans, when we make that reintegration process back home, you're waiting hundreds of days in order just to get your benefits or hundreds of days in order to be able to see a doctor. Uh, you know, so I think one thing that happens for a lot of veterans, uh, and, and whether it be with the struggles of, you know, health care or mental health and or employment, higher education, those are all structural things that have to be addressed. But one of the biggest challenges we have in our, as, as a larger society is for these wars, less than one half of one percent of our population have any direct involvement whatsoever with these wars. And so we have to do a better job of being able to personalize and humanize who these veterans are. So we feel a larger collective involvement in terms of how exact, in terms of thinking about what can we do to help that reintegration process. So you are an Army vet yourself. What sorts of challenges did you face when you returned? You know, in many ways, uh, you know, I, I faced challenges that I wasn't even expecting. Um, you know, because oftentimes you're so worried and focused on your soldiers. Uh, but when I came back, I, I realized very quickly that I was having problems with white lights. Uh, you know, we're in a place where you have 100% light discipline when you head into combat. Um, and, you know, it's either you have, when the sun goes down, you either have little green lights or you have little red lights because those can't be seen from far away. White lights can be seen from miles away. Uh, and so to go from that environment where that's all you know, uh, and you take that very seriously to now two weeks later, you're in Times Square or you're in, you know, downtown San Diego. Um, you don't anticipate how your brain might have a difficulty transitioning to that. Uh, difficulties with even speaking with my family. You know, oftentimes my family, they wanted to ask questions, but they weren't sure what to ask. And so oftentimes they said, we don't want to ask the wrong question or say something that's going to trigger something. So therefore we'll say nothing. Uh, the problem was that my interpretation when they did that was that they did not care. They didn't care about what I just went through. They didn't care about my experience. And so I think a lot of the process both with family and also with the larger community is about giving that veteran space in order to make that transition.
And we're going to have to wrap it there. Wes Moore, thanks so much for coming on the program. Thank you so much.